Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mr. Frank. Well, good morning, afternoon, whenever you decide to watch this. I wanted to make a quick video to introduce you to dark romanticism. Uh, you'll have this video available to you on Google Classroom. So here we go. Our three main dark romantics are going to be Herman Melville, Nathaniel Hawthorne, and Edgar Allan Poe. Um, Melville and Hawthorne are incredibly more interesting than Poe, so here we, uh, here we can go with that. Uh, Melville wrote Moby Dick, which is something that you should know uh, in case you ever wind up on Jeopardy. Uh, Moby Dick is an incredibly dark story that I've never read the entire thing of, but my general uh, Sparknotes version is Dude Hunts Down a White Whale, which is an analogy for our hopes and dreams. He eventually, after a lot of struggle and toil, kills the white whale. It's too big to fit on his boat, so he drags it behind him. And uh, unfortunately, by the time he gets back to shore, sharks and other uh, fish have eaten the white whale. So all he arrives with is a carcass. So uh, the message to us humans is no matter how hard you work to get your hopes and dreams, uh, it will just wind up being a deep shell of uh, <laughs> what you wanted it to be. So uh, not great. Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote The Scarlet Letter, which is a story about a puritanical woman who has sex outside of marriage and gets labeled a whore by her community. Sounds a little bit familiar, a la The Crucible. And she is forced to wear a red A on her shirt uh, and dress and um, be labeled an adulterer. And she, you know, subsequently gets excommunicated from her uh, community. Uh, pretty terrible and dark and shameful as well. Uh, Edgar Allan Poe, you know all that good stuff uh, from him. So uh, we're going to move on. I would suggest that you know a large eye roll. I'm sure you guys all missed the bell. Um, I would suggest that you know Melville and Hawthorne uh, moving, moving forward. Um, so what did these dark romantics believe? Uh, two main things. First, these people believed that we weren't inherently good people, okay? They believed that humans all have a dark and evil side, and we are actively suppressing that evil at all times, which is kind of a dark, scary thought. They also felt that nurture was more important than nature. And what that means is where you grow up, the type of environment in which you are raised makes more of an impact on the way that you act in life than um, where you're raised. Okay. Now, transcendentalists in January, once we get there, they're going to think the exact opposite. They're going to think that all people are good and it's our environment that makes us bad. These people believe that we all have bad inside of us and the environment is what brings it out of us. Okay. Now, what did they write about? The, um, the main things that they wrote about are the following three. The first is madness of the human psyche. Your psyche is your soul. It's that, um, that guiding force that all of us have inside of us. And they, dark romantics believe that all of us had the, uh, um, all of us have the potential to go crazy. And we have the potential to be insane. And, and I think most of us, um, you know, the pandemic is a perfect example. All of us have gone just a little bit nuts in the last nine months. And, and that's, that's a dark romantic element. Uh, they believe that uh, this classic conflict between good and evil is worthy of exploration. And they wanted to focus mainly on the evil side. How do people become evil? All right. The most interesting aspect of dark romanticism for me is the fact that these authors try to expose the psychological effects of guilt and sin, meaning what happens to your brain when you are guilty of a crime? What happens to your brain when you commit a sin? The Telltale Heart, which you all should have read in middle school, is a perfect example of this. This guy commits a murder, buries the guy under the floorboards. He goes crazy madness of the human psyche because of that sinful act you know uh, uh the most sinful thing you can do is 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 to kill somebody and um you know he commits he commits murder and um uh poe for for all of his faults he exposes what that might feel like poe didn't kill anybody that we know of but um he gets inside of the mind of somebody that did and that conflict between good and evil that struggle that we all go through it's where all good movies, all good stories, all good television comes from. So that's your basic four-minute, five-minute lecture on dark romanticism. I hope you can see how it applies to, to actual romanticism, and um, I hope that it makes this PowerPoint a little bit more enjoyable for you. So uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.